Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's live Q&A session. My name is Marcy Melzer, and I am an intuitive speech and language pathologist, and I help parents teach their late-talking children how to use the words they need to share their wisdom with the world. And today, I'm doing a live Q&A session. I do it every Thursday here on my pages. It's kind of spread across other pages. So if you have a question about your late talker, you can engage with me a couple different ways. You can um, post your question in the comments right here on this video, or you can request to join me live. And you do that by turning your phone sideways and look for a little icon there to do it. So you can do that either way. So hey, thanks for joining me, Monica and Samantha and Maria. Thanks for joining me today. Um, what I'd like to do while I'm waiting for a few questions to come in is to get started with a question that I received from my language facilitation resources group. So for those of you who don't know, I have a group where I post every week. One of the other things that I do to help families is I post a tip of the week, which actually has demo strategies, and that goes into my language facilitation resources group. That's the only place to see that. So in that group, I did have a mom who posted a question for me. Hey, Sophia and Candice, thanks for joining me. I'm sending y'all a little wave. Um, and that mom has a nonverbal late talker. I think he's nonverbal. She's been following me for a little while. And her question um, was about she can get her son to imitate some nonverbal actions when she's singing a song, but she can't get him to follow a direction. And her question was, how can I want to write it exactly? How can I help him un understand language okay so the first thing is in order to know if your child understands language most parents usually try to um, elicit an answer to a question or a direction for a child to follow because that's how you sort of test to know if your child is understanding you. You can't know if they understand you unless you say something and get some kind of a response. So most parents will, what I call, test their lay talker by asking questions. What do you have there? What are you doing? What did you do at school today? What is it? What do you want? You know, um, asking questions like that to try to get a response. Excuse me, my nose itches. Got a little fuzz on there. Um, <clears throat> so what, um, unfortunately, kids who are late talkers start with understanding language in a very general sense. They use all of their senses to understand what's going on, whether it's spoken or not. So what kids do is they focus on the information that is the most valuable to them, the most meaningful, the, th the information that they can get the most knowledge out of. So if they, um, and they're always going to focus on information that's interesting or fun for them, which is why a lot of kids, the first words they say, especially if they're older nonverbal kids, are songs or words from movies or um, video or um, things that they've seen, or even um, they could be repeating things that they've heard you say. So if you're asking your child a question to sort of test to see if they're understanding you and you get a question in response, that's your child imitating your language because most of the time when we teach kids to use language or teach them anything, they learn by imitating. So the mom who asked me the question, Tara, she said that she can get her child to imitate or her child will imitate her when she's doing a song or something like that, but she won't, he won't answer or follow a direction. So <clears throat> what's usually happened for kids who are late talking is you're modeling language 
in a way that they're paying attention to. It must be a song her little guy likes. If it's Baby Shark, do, 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 you know, you maybe he'll do the do, do part or because he's engaging and he's looked at her in addition to listening to the song, he's watched her and used his eyes to understand what she's trying to communicate. She's trying to sing the song. She's trying to do stuff like that. So, hey, Lindsay. Hey, Sophia. So what, um, what I recommend for parents like that, like her question is, how do I get him to understand language? And what the thing is, he probably understands a lot more than you know, because he's just not responding to the test. The test is the direction or the, um, the direction or the, the question that you're asking. So how to know if your child is understanding you for sure every word you say is by the best way is by you interpreting all the things that they are communicating. All right, so how does that work if a child's not verbal, right? So if in Tara's case, her son is nonverbal and he is using other things to communicate. So let's say he is dragging her to get to the kitchen if he wants something to eat, which is a very common um, nonverbal communication behavior. If a child wants something to eat, they'll either bring the item to you or take you to the item or um, reach your hand to get to the item or or cry and you know that they're hungry because they're in the kitchen or something like that. However you know what they're communicating, you interpret that, what they're trying to communicate into words. And how that helps children understand language is it shows them that words connect to the behaviors that they are using. So if your child is using nonverbal communication, because all of the behaviors that they use are communication, that's what they think is their language, right? Their gestures, their all of that stuff. That's what they're using to communicate with you. And so when you interpret that behavior into words right in the moment, what I always say is the right words, the right way at the right time, instead of that behavior or at the same time that behavior happens, you say the words that that behavior means. And that's how a child connects. This is my experience and how words represent my experience. Okay. So before you can ever test them to say, you know, to answer a question, what are you doing when they're climbing up the, uh, up the cabinet, right? And you say, what are you doing? They, you know, the answer to that question is, I'm climbing up the cabinet to get to what I want. So you would say that in a way, climbing up, uh-oh, no, you know, if you want the child to be climbing or describe what's happening. Don't ask about it because your child can't answer the question and it doesn't make sense for them to answer a question about something that you can physically observe, right? So if you see something and then you say, you know, if, if I'm holding my water bottle and I say, what is that? And it's something that I've said a hundred times that I know it's a water bottle. The child's going to look at you like, <clears throat> why are you asking that question? You know it's a water bottle. So the, the, the way to get your child to understand language is to understand what language is. Hey, Jenna. Um, so if, you want to encourage your child to understand every word you're saying. First of all, they have to be paying attention to the words that you're saying. So that's why um, Tara's child is paying attention to her because he likes the songs that she sings, but he's not paying attention to her when she's asking him questions or giving him directions because it's not important to him. It's not it's not a necessary exchange of 
talking. It's just a way that she's trying to potentially elicit language or get her child to say something instead of giving him the words he needs, right? So language facilitation to get kids to understand language involves saying the right words the right way at the right time. So that's how you know that your child understands all of the language that you're saying. And instead of asking them for them to demonstrate their understanding to you, when they react to you talking about their actions and their behavior and the things that's going around you, and they hear you describing it and talking about it, as if they are hearing it for the first time, right? So you're going to be facilitating brand new language. Hey, Christina. And if you want to see your child learning new language, they have to know what it is first. Just like Tara's demonstrating when she's singing Baby Shark and she's doing this with her hand and she's saying, do, 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 do. Her child is watching her do that and imitating her. You'll know that this is working like this if you're asking your child questions to try to see if they're understanding you and you get a question back. That means that they're parroting or imitating you, which is great, but it's not functional language, right? But it is one of the ways that kids learn. So if your child is just saying words that they hear, then you need to say the right words the right way at the right time. So they hear the right words the right way at the right time. And then they learn to adapt and use them because you're doing that language facilitation during your everyday life. And that's how it works, right? So that's the answer to Tara's question. I'm going to go ahead and, and hopefully she'll be able to watch this replay because I haven't seen her pop on. And there are a couple more families watching me now. So if you have a question or if you have a late talker um, and you kind of want to know what's going on, like what you're struggling with, what's what's holding things up, like why is it challenging for you to help your child use words and maybe I can give you some guidance in ways to make that easier for you. Because the thing about language facilitation is it always has to be four things, always has to be easy. So if you're struggling, with whatever you're doing to facilitate language at home. If you're struggling with that, then that's hard, all right? And that's not easy. So we have to make all of the strategies you would use with your child easy, all right? The second thing every good language facilitation is, it's happy. So easy and happy. And so if the thing you're expecting your child to do is so easy that they could do it, you know, without even thinking hardly, um, you know, the way that Tara's son imitates her when she's singing the baby shark song, the way that, you know, your, your child interacts with you naturally when they're having fun, right? Easy and happy. Um, because if anybody's not happy and the situation is too hard, your child's not going to buy in and they're not going to want to try hard at it, okay? So then those strategies won't work. So it has to be easy. It has to be happy. It also has to be safe. Right. So if your child has abandoned their communication attempts, even if they're nonverbal, to just independently get everything on their own and they're climbing, they're opening locks, they're they're fighting with you. Like if you put things out of reach and they're screaming and fighting or maybe they're hitting you or becoming aggressive with their communication, all of those things are not safe. So any good language facilitation strategy has to incorporate safe methods of communication. Makes sense, right? Easy, happy, and safe. And then the fourth and most important component of any language facilitation strategy is that it's fun. Because if it isn't fun, it 
isn't fun. And you know that is true for every human, no matter how old you are, but especially true for a child who is a late talker. Because late talkers who have been pressured or prompted or are, you know, you can't have this till you get it, or they're asking a lot of questions or they're being tested all day, that's no fun. And they're not going to buy in. It has to be fun and do, and it has to be natural during the activities that you do, right? It also has to be frequent. My friend Mark, who uses this method to work with, um, to work with adults who have had strokes and have aphasia. So people who've had the ability to talk and lose the ability to talk. That's my friend Mark, uses language facilitation methods in natural social interactive communication to use with his teaching of talking method that he uses with um, people after after stroke or after aphasia. And he determined, you know, he's figured out too, just like I have, that it takes between eight to 10 hours per week of natural language facilitation for a person to be able to adapt and reintegrate natural verbal language. And Mark is proving it for people who had language and lost it. And the families in my program are proving it for children who are late talkers, who haven't started using language yet. And there's a million different reasons why people get, why people are late talking. And there are a million different reasons why people lose the ability to communicate. And those reasons, those root causes for either the delay in development or the loss of speech. So this is true for families who have had kids who did talk and they lost talking right? In addition to families whose kids are late talking altogether, they haven't started using natural language yet. So these strategies, like my friend Mark says, it takes eight to 10 hours a week of exposure to targeted language facilitation to be able to help shift the current communication patterns, which are the nonverbal communication that kids are learning, shift them into the new kind of language that you are facilitating. And what's remarkable about language facilitation is that it works however the parents are using it. So as long as you're facilitating language consistently in the same kinds of ways every day, for at least an hour and a half a day. It only pans out to an hour and a half a day. And some families don't get targeted work for an hour and a half a day, but some days they spend two or three hours of their day doing targeted language facilitation. And it's easy to do targeted language facilitation in your everyday life because you just do it while you're doing everything else, just like you talk with other people. I often say that parents can do language facilitation with your arms full of groceries while you're unloading kids from the car because it's all about communicating about the current situation, exactly what's happening right now, using the right words the right way at the right time. And that's how you know that it is the language that you want to facilitate because you are facilitating it as a parent, as their caregiver. So so that's the, um, that's the Q&A for today. I don't see any other people joining on with questions. I see that there's a bunch of people watching. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And, um, and, and those of you who have shared questions with me before, these Q&A sessions are a way for me to sort of address the kinds of things that are going on with everybody and or a lot of people, you know, like I said, even though kids are late talking for different reasons, um, many of the same parents have the same kinds of circumstances. So in case of today's Q&A question, um, if your child is 
using or is imitating nonverbal things that you're doing, if your child is using nonverbal things to communicate with you, and if your child is making some sounds, if they're babbling, if they're even saying some words, or even if they're saying some noises, those are the kinds of nonverbal communication that you can shift and move into natural verbal language, all right? As long as your child is able to produce speech sounds, and wants to communicate with you, and they can hear well enough to communicate, to hear speech sounds, then language, then parents can communicate. And then the other thing that I just kind of wanted to mention too is it doesn't have to be, like it really doesn't matter what the diagnosis is that your child has. What matters most about language facilitation is you understanding your child's ability to communicate and um, using nonverbal methods and your ability to interpret that communication into natural verbal speech with a lot of consistency. So the more you do this language facilitation, the more you facilitate language. And the more you have fun making it easy, happy, safe, and fun, the whole strategies, the easier it is for all of you to start to see new verbal language. And that's what's happening with all of the families in my Waves of Communication program. So, all right, then I'm going to get out of here for this live session. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And those of you who've watched on the replay, thank you so much for joining me again. And I will see you all on my next live video.